I used to do lots of things. I used to do things and I'd say things and Jesus I was evil. Take things and break things and Jesus I was evil. I never shook babies. Yeah. You didn't do your thing. Usually you go, all right. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always wait for it. You're like, you you got to do it like the mom from Bob's Burgers. All right. <laughs> or this is Matthew McConaughey. Did you see him when he did the, the Between Two Ferns? Uh, recently? Uh, no, no. This, this was years ago. This was back. Uh, probably. I can't remember exactly. Is he the one? He I like when, when Zach Elfman has yelled. He's always like, don't touch my fern. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I forget if that was McConaughey or whoever. I don't know if it was that one, but there, in, in his interview with, with McConaughey, he's written a piece of paper and it goes, all right, all right, all right. Those are the box office receipts for your last three movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really good. I forget who he's in an episode with someone. The person's just like texting the whole time. It might've been Brad Pitt or someone. He's uh, like staring at him. It's like, you're just going to text the, so you're just gonna text the whole time. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Does he still do that? Do the last know? one he did, I think, it was like a year and a half ago. It was okay. it had Samuel L. Jackson and right. Toby Maguire. Yeah, that was very funny. Yeah, I feel that that's kind of like old. I don't, I don't know how you break up the internet. It's like a middle internet period. I've, yeah, because that was Funny or Die, which I know is still around, but that was... Oh, they, was they Funny were, or Die? Yeah. Okay, yeah. but I think Funny or Die, I think very, like, late 2000s, early 2010s. Yeah, Like, yeah. middle grade internet, early YouTube internet. Yeah, yeah. It was a little yeah. more Wild West. I think they were mm -hmm. kind of just trying a bunch of random crap. There's a really good, and then we'll get into it, there's a really good Funny or Die skit with, uh, it has, like, all these celebrities, like Ben Stiller and... Um, uh, Kevin Spacey, I think Kevin Spacey. Anyway, a bunch of like typical Hollywood celebrities, uh -huh. and they're doing something with for Bill Clinton, like a fundraiser type thing. Uh -huh. And they're they're making fun of themselves, which is funny. And they're just kind yeah. of going around the table pitching ideas, and one of them's like, what, like what, "We we got everyone in the world to hold their breath for thirty seconds or something." <laughs> and, it's like, and then he's on the phone with Bill Clinton. He's like, "You know, we are really working on. We have a whole like breathing initiative." He's like, "I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> it's very it's, it's very fun i can't remember the specifics but yeah. it, it was good yeah okay so all right today we're talking about all kinds of cool stuff actually yeah i brought that up we're gonna talk about the clintons or a clinton yeah that's the true other, yeah the, the other one um yeah and i'm actually believe it or not going to agree with hillary clinton on something which is yeah. wild yeah um yeah. you know epstein had it coming so I agree with her on that. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, should, you, you should have kept your mouth shut. He he, he was starting to blab. So I, way, I, I that, agree that, that, that would, that's a that's a reference for all the um, all the uh, I'm blanking on his name. Who's the comedian? Um, Tim Dillon. All the Tim um, Dillon fans out there. That, that's a yeah. deep cut for Tim Dillon fans. It's actually pretty pretty gruesome video where it's this uh we're getting really derailed here but it's this um it's like during the winter i think somewhere in pennsylvania and there's three people like a couple and then another guy and their neighbors you can tell they just hate each other's guts mm -hmm. and and from what i understand i don't want to besmirch the dead but from what i understand is that the couple was like messing with them more mm -hmm. or less right about shoveling snow and whatever and he goes inside comes back out with an assault rifle and murders them in Dude. cold blood like and and he goes up to the woman after he shoots her and it's like you should have kept your fucking mouth shut <laughs> and Tim Dillon I did an episode on it and the whole time he's just like you should have kept your mouth shut and it became kind of <laughs> like you know, like even to this day you'll look at like a Tim Dillon tweet or something you'll see people just like replying that like you should have kept your mouth shut then the guy went inside and killed himself it was very oh. it was very disturbing this is yeah, like 2020 yeah. 20, people were going crazy back then yeah. but anyway different note uh Hillary Clinton yeah um yes uh so two things we agree that she should have killed Epstein yeah. and um that she's actually right on free speech and mm -hmm. a clip that fire put out. We love fire. We, we oh, yeah. come up fire a lot. 
um, analyzing this interaction that she had with, um, I don't know what the context was in terms of like, she was giving a talk, right? Yeah. She was invited yeah. somewhere, maybe a university, maybe, I, I, I don't know. Fuck, fuck it looks foundation. like it, uh, the backdrop says the Institute of Global Politics. and Which is like she's... the most like globular, morass, bureaucratic, like yeah. civil... Uh, civil society BS, which does not surprise me that she's talking at something like that. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, do you want me to recap it? Or yeah, yeah, based, I mean, I don't really know what they're talking about because the clip really concerns a moment where a young man stands up uh, in the middle. He's probably in his 20s, uh, mm -hmm. stands up in the middle of whatever this presentation is or this talk is and just starts interrupting her and yelling at her and saying, why won't why doesn't the president denounce um, the genocide, the war in Gaza, like what's going on to the Palestinians, which is, I mean, Hillary Clinton is not even in the cabinet or anything. Like, yes, yeah. I also, I believe that the Clintons and Obama is kind of running a shadow government because Biden is, uh, you know, a member of the walking dead, but mm -hmm. yep. um, that's, I mean, that, that's, I don't think that's a commonly held belief. Yeah. Uh, and he starts yelling, the, the kid starts yelling about um, free speech. Like, this is my free speech. This is my, like, I'm exercising my right to free speech. And she's like, this isn't free speech. Like, you're not. And, and she, she, I, to her credit, she actually handles it, like, really well. Yeah. Which, man, yeah. I hate to compliment Hillary Clinton because she's yeah. a, a lizard woman. But yeah. um, she's like, that's not your free speech. You're. Like, and she even kind of lets him like do his little spiel, get his virtue signal points in with his friends. And then it's like, okay, you're done. Like you had your speech. Now it's mine. Like you don't get to just monopolize the conversation, which isn't even a conversation. You're just interrupting yeah. and also keeping people. And, and she doesn't say this part, but the lawyer for fire who analyzes it gives his, uh, you know, analysis, I guess. And so it's like, yeah. yeah, like also not letting her speak and other other people who like they showed up to hear her speak and the presenter speak and the moderator whatever it is not someone else in the crowd yep. like that would be like someone i don't know how what else it would work this is the best situation but i don't know somehow interrupting a comedy show i guess would be another example which we will talk about in this episode yeah, also yeah. or somehow like a band or something like no people didn't they came to see their free speech their art they right. not you make a make a comment um and that's it's it bothers me that now i'm assuming he's a member of the left sure maybe he could be like a libertarian like there is some horseshoe sure um this is kind of a horseshoe issue in in, in some ways yep. um but let's say i'm assuming he's like a progressive guy right yeah he seemed pretty woke and in, in yeah. demeanor and uh <laughs> in rhetoric and in behavior but like, <laughs> and i want to and i kind of want to be like how dare you start saying the free speech shit now we talked about this yeah. last episode yeah, yeah. it's like now all of a sudden now, because the institutions and the powers that be and the media mostly, um, or at least a lot of the media is against your position. And actually the American people at large are against your, like their view is a actual minority view. Not that I don't share some of it and whatever sure. that view is, whether it's ceasefire or jihad or whatever, like the whole range of the gamut of pro-Palestinian, let's just say, is a minority view in America, actually, uh, pretty much all polling and pretty much all demographics, um, maybe not Muslims, but um, yeah. like even like young people, like, but it's just there, just like the um, defund the police, just like, which actually yeah. got traction with like mainstream, a mainstream um, political party, like yeah. this, they're just loud and annoying. And even if I agree with them on some of it, um, it, they make me so not want to support them where I've just kind of been yeah. on the sidelines pointing out hypocrisies uh, pointing. And also some of those hypocrisies coming very much from the pro Israel side, which I yeah. retweeted uh, Chinese artist, a way way, I way way. I don't know if I'm saying his name, right. Where he had his uh, art show in London canceled for pro Palestinian to which like, I I'm going to be consistent. And like, that's yeah. wrong. Like he yeah. should not have that canceled, which we can get into that later too. But yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so the heckler's veto is, is, is was an interesting concept. I, 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 I don't know if you remember Ben. It, this was months ago, but I was like, I, I'm pretty sure there's a name for for the concept of like using your speech to drown out another person's speech, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, is this it? Yeah, this is this is what it was, and that's why I was asking veto. you. So I was like, I wonder, is it like a legal thing, or is it? Something I've like never that? heard it before, but I yeah. like it. Yeah, no, it, it's good. And shout out. Yeah. 
uh, you know, the, the, the video that was put out by Fire, uh, the the uh, lawyer, his name is Zach Greenberg, who I instantly followed after his analysis on this. Mm. I mean, first uh, amendment uh, attorney for uh, Fire, as well as the president of the the Philadelphia Area Disc Alliance. Oh, that's something else. This is sports. Yeah, thing. Fire has an office in Philly. Yeah, but um, shout out to Zach Greenberg um, for his uh, great analysis of this. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's it's it's um, you're right though of, of like you know this ostensibly woke person and you know the woke is as we've pointed out on countless occasions is no fr friend to free speech is all of a sudden invoking free speech yeah. but in kind of like the worst uh, extreme. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like the uh, the it's the kind of the same thing with like the sovereign citizens, like the most extreme libertarians, where they just kind of use the language of the Constitution and legalese to like try and own police officers and court clerks yeah. and stuff like that. And a lot of times yeah. they're like really wrong, but they sound they're very persistent. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that that bothers me, of course, because it's like, where were you for the other 1000 issues that came up that you just happened to agree with? Now, yeah. all of a sudden, you're a free speech warrior um, where you would happily silence all these other views. Um, and also, if it was reversed, if someone stood up and it was, let's say, like a Linder Sar Sauer or a Corey Bush, you know, whoever member of the squad was mm -hmm. giving some presentation and a pro-Israel person stood up, like, I'm sure you wouldn't start agreeing that it's their free speech to interrupt what you came to see. Like, that's yeah. not it at all. Uh, like a lot of free speech conversations, when, when you sent me that and I watched it, what I first thought of was, um, like I just said, a lot of these free speech, kind of, what case always gets brought up, the Skokie, Illinois case, right? It's kind of like, it's basically, which I think is a good thing. It's basically like in the, the I think like normies know what that is by now. Um, and one of the arguments that, these off many Jewish lawyers made to support the neo-Nazis arguing was like, you can actually drown them out with your speech. Now that might sound hypocritical to what we're saying here, but let me explain. That's different because that is a protest and a counter protest. Those are sections. It's like, if you show up at, spot x where you're de designated to go and the neo-nazis show up in spot y where they're designated to go and you just outnumber them 10 to 1 that's fine and you drown them out like that. that's different than showing up to like their uh lecture hall or whatever if they get invited somewhere which wouldn't it, it, you can't even imagine that happening anymore but times were different like those are different things so that's what I want to be clear about. Like, it's like, oh, so what? You can't counter protest anymore? No, of course you can counter protest. That person could have protested outside of the venue, right? Yeah. Um, uh, that That's totally different. So I, I do want to make that distinction because that's an argument that I usually make. It's like, if you don't like the speech, you can counter it. But but there are, but it's, it's different between like a presentation, a show versus... Um, uh, like a like a public forum protest mm, yes. where just like you can and even if you uh, as as cringe as they are the ACLU unless they've scrubbed it from their site like they say no you cannot just take up the street because you're protesting that's not how it works and I don't right. like how this this became a thing that happened today in California where they shut down a bridge I think up in the Bay Area mm. I forget which one wasn't the Golden Gate Bridge, but Bay Bridge, is that? Yeah, yeah, there's a Bay Bridge, yeah. Is the Bay Bridge what goes from, uh, uh, I, I don't know, is that what goes to like Alameda to County? Oakland. Yeah, that, to, to Alameda County, yeah. Yeah, Alameda County, right. So um, that's like a major bridge. San Francisco, Alameda County, this is like a hugely populated area, not that that should matter, where people have to like go to work or ambulances have to take it or like just basic shit, like, like trucks have to get to make deliveries for restaurants that the food will spoil and this kind of stuff. And because like you don't like what the government's doing, that you're going to ruin all these people's lives. Like, first of all, it's counterproductive. I can't imagine that actually yeah. pulls anyone to your side. And Thanks also, for making me late to work. I agree with you. It's also like, <laughs> this is the last issue on the fucking planet that needs, like, attention. Like, yeah. everyone knows what's going on. It's the most... I can't go through my podcast list without yeah. seeing something. You can't turn it on the news without, without it being about this issue, even though I think there's way more important things going on in our country right now. Yeah. Um, so it's like, it's not like this needs, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, not advocacy, but um, oh, what's the word they always use for like 
awareness awareness yeah it's like this doesn't need awareness it's not like some like look no one's paying attention to this and it's going to kill us all like i guess somewhat environmentalists have a better argument still wrong yeah. still yeah. and they piss me off but like there's a better argument for like no one's paying attention to global warming and this stuff i get that more still sure. don't block the street you're not like yeah. you want to go on the sidewalk that's fine yeah. but this is the last issue on the planet that needs awareness um so uh, that's different than going to a public forum, getting the license or whatever you need, or just like showing up in, in a town square or city hall, like that stuff. There are places where you can protest and every voice heard uh, that count that you can also counter protest. Mm -hmm. And if you drown them out, you drown them out. That's totally fine. This was not yeah. that situation. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it always cracks me up when, when like environmentalists, when, when they block traffic, and it's like, you know, these cars are staying longer on the road. Yes, of you. Yes, like, 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 yes, exactly. <laughs> right. They're idling. It's like the one thing they say not to do. Um, well, again, but, an environment, it's the same thing. Like I actually share a lot of sympathies with some yeah. of these left-wing causes yeah, to an extent, yeah. environmentalism, animal rights, yeah. uh, Palestinian like rights and, and freedom and stuff like that. I actually really do share some of those, some of those sympathies, but yeah. the people who also share them are the worst people on the planet I know, I know. and they make me not want to like be associated with them. I know, I and know. and I it really sucks because like actually more reasonable level-headed people, like I agree with you on the merits, not all of it, but to an extent. Sure. And it makes it really hard to share a view because, like, you know, like you know, publicly or, or like on social media, because there's that risk of them lump, of 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 the opponents lumping you in with the crazies. You're like, no, I'm trying mm -hmm. to like offer like a reasonable yeah. defense of this argument. I, I'm not I'm not a crazy person who's shouting out, you know, but um, like yeah, destroying artwork in a museum. Exactly, for, it's yeah. like, what is that? doing like that's only bringing negative awareness. Yeah. It's like, oh, so the p. It's like people do look at that. It's like. Okay, here's the view. Who's following it? People do that sometimes, rightly or wrong. It's like, oh well, all, all these hicks in the country, all these rednecks or whatever, like they don't want this to happen, or they want this. So, and I don't like them. So I'm gonna just take the other position. Like, you don't think you're doing the same thing? Yeah. Like, oh well, I might have some sympathies about the environment and fossil fuels and big oil and all of these things. Uh, but you're destroying priceless works of art. Uh, no, I'm not going to associate with you. And I'm just like going to kind of naturally recede from that issue. I, I don't yeah. think that's, that's a, that's a, I think that's totally natural. Yeah. It's almost like biological. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, uh, when I was driving to work the other day, I saw, uh, I, I was on the freeway and I saw a sign hanging from an overpass and it said, um, uh, a child will be murdered on your way to brunch in, in Gaza. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's like, and you know, I, I'm not trivializing what's going on over there, but it's also just like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I got to make money to pay rent. Like, you know, I can't. Shit, like, like, what am I? Like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm not going to fucking brunch. I'm going to my work so I can barely scrape by for the month. Like, <laughs> that's <laughs> what? Hold on, is that? I feel like that's a skit for something. May is it like documentary now, or it's it sounds like a documentary, so, now something <laughs> like that, where it's like, Oh my god, I can't remember where it's some retail thing or something where they hand it to you, or the I'm totally butchering this, but to that effect, where it's like, um, they give you like a coffee and it's like 900 children will like <laughs> die of river, blow, will like get river blindness, <laughs> like right. <laughs> By the time you finish your coffee, <laughs> it's like something like that. Uh, I can't remember. I'll, I'll think of it because it's it's something I've seen more than once. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, but it's definitely like, along those lines of like, why? I, it's not no. Portlandia because I haven't seen enough Portlandia, but it would be like a Portlandia sketch. Yeah, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. Of like the sort of like slacktivism of like, mm -hmm. I'm doing like the, the most lazy thing possible to to promote this thing. Awareness. Um, that's exactly. what it Awareness. is. That's, yeah, exactly. yeah. that's what it's like. That's what you always look at. And that's always a red flag. Like, okay, so this organization wants my donation. Where's the donation going? Awareness is right. just bullshit. 
Like, yeah, exactly. Nothing. It's it's not actually doing anything. I was just thinking about this. It, it's like, like like whenever I'm, I'm scrolling through through Instagram and then I see like, oh, you know, help us spread awareness for mental health or for this cause. I mean, I don't give a shit about awareness. Like, yeah. if I see someone say, hey, you know, donate money to, you know, we're going to send food to this group place, or we need to be sending aid over here, or we're organizing volunteers for this thing on this weekend, or whatever. It's like, okay, cool. You, that's actionable. But it's like, I, I don't give a fuck about awareness. Like, yeah. Ugh, Man, God. now I'm really blanking because I really want to know what that sketch is. It sounds good, but yeah, it's definitely yeah. That, that that sort of lazy activist thing. Yeah, and the okay, coffee. I, sh- I, I I hope it was from a, like 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 in, in the situation of like a, a coffee shop, like because like baristas are the most. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that. I, yeah. I don't know if it's like a sitcom, like a how I met your part, like how I met your mother, but yeah. I don't know, something like that. Anywho, so um, anything else on Hillary Clinton? No, <laughs> well, I got a bunch of things on Hillary Clinton. No, um, yeah, uh, but like the, the heckler's veto. So yeah, actually, and, and I think this is this is a good segue into our next topic. Um, I want. I, I'm just coming up with this right now, so so feel free to, to you know body check my argument in real time here. But I um, um <laughs> uh, uh, I see the heckler's veto as like as being sort of like amplified into sort of cancel culture, like, 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 like cancel culture is, is that the heckler's veto writ large where it's like, it, you know, the heckler's veto is, is like, you know, you shouting over another person and preventing that person, you know, preventing them from being heard by other people. Right. Whereas cancel culture is sort of like, I don't like this comedian. I want to get there. Um, it, so it's not enough for me to just like change the channel or to not show up or, or not, yeah. not see them perform live. I'm going to demand that Netflix remove their special, um from from their platforms that nobody else gets to see it too it's like i'm just exercising my free speech too it's i'm just sharing but it's like no you're actually trying you're actually attempting to get in the way of other people enjoying that comedian speech well it's a concept that we've talked about a bunch it's like boycotting is not cancel culture like you can boy like you can't you don't have to see anything it's stopping other people from it so the heckler's veto is just kind of one of the more aggressive versions of that it's um instead of not showing up to Hillary Clinton's talk, mm-hmm. um, not showing up and protesting it, which is yeah. also fine, yep, yep. but it's, it's ruining it for everyone else. Exactly. Um, yeah. and that's the same thing that that's the opposite of boycotting, which would be, it's like kind of what happened with Bud Light. Like, mm-hmm. well, people were upset with Bud Light for a couple different reasons. One, I think the, the main reason of it is not what everyone talks about, which is the, um, the trans activist person, um, yeah. Dylan Mulvaney. Uh, Dylan Mulvaney. That that was part of it. It was what happened after that that always gets lost in this conversation, mm-hmm. which was much more important, was that the marketing execs or whoever who created that also said, we want to pivot away from our, basically our brand, our drinkers, which is yep. really, really, really dumb. Yeah. Like that you offended not by trying to cast a wider net, which of course will piss off some people and that's sure. understandable, but- but also saying, no, we don't want, we want a new market. We want yeah. new drinkers and understandable people are like, well, fuck you. Then I'll go drink Coors Light. I'll go drink Miller Light. Like yeah. I'll go drink Modelo, which is now the biggest beer in America. Um, yeah. uh, so that, and that always gets lost in this conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that boycott that also then has natural market effects because it's, you know, what beer is like, it's one of the most like capitalistic things, right? It's on mm-hmm. the shelf and you buy it and there's competing prices, like a lot, a lot of products where then because sales are down, there's only so much shelf space and the sellers have to use that shelf space for other beers yeah. um, because that's just what's selling. Like, that's yeah. natural, but that's not drinkers who are against Bud Light going in and um throwing it out like yeah, taking it off yeah. the shelves and throwing it out so no one else can enjoy it right. um it's not them like attacking bud light trucks or anheuser-busch plants or whatever so that the beer doesn't make it to consumers who still want it yeah. it's just not drinking it right right um so yeah that that's that's kind of like the analogy to, to to this situation right right and so you know the reason why i brought up the comedy thing is because we watched this debate uh that was yeah that came out uh, earlier uh, this There's week co- yeah, on tenth, I think. Yeah, um, um, this is on open to debate. It was moderated by that guy from Reason, Nick yeah, Nick, Nick Gillespie. Nick Gillespie, yeah. 
Um, and it was between uh, comedian Lou Perez and comedian Michael Ian Black. I really um, like Lou Perez. I've been following yeah. on, him on uh, uh, Twitter. He, He's very, very funny. Follows me. He Does it? Of, yeah, so maybe I'll... He, he I'll, might follow I'll, me too, actually. We interacted once. I said he had a picture up, and I'm like, you look like a less fat Hispanic Matt. Um, uh, not Matt, Mac from Always Sunny. He's like, yeah, that's <laughs> uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. We, we, I've only it, it's it's been a while since I was, when he and I have ever interacted, but uh, he was yeah, very mean, funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this was a debate, which I am trying to stop saying woke more. That's the term they use. That the topic was this woke is um killing comedy. I like so why I'm trying to stop using woke is because it's kind of been tainted. It's mm-hmm people hear it and it's not taken seriously yeah so i've made my own term crit which has not caught on but i'm trying to make catch on that's not the only reason why i stopped saying woke but also i try and just use like progressivism identity politics because people still and i don't know progressive will ever kind of be that poison pill type term Mm. um so i just use that against them instead of being well i'm not woke i'm like no like your your identity politics it used to be called political correctness it's just like progressivism like crit Mm. progressivism so that that's what i try and use but yeah so the topic was is wokeism killing comedy it was michael ian black and uh lou perez lou perez was for yes michael Ian black was for no um and uh it was very predictable in my opinion um i I was very open-minded like if michael ian black had some good arguments Mm -hmm. i I was down to listen uh i didn't hear really any yeah he was not very funny either no he contradicted himself a lot yeah and um he's very predictable where lou perez was very funny Mm -hmm. uh he made kind of the typical but but substantive arguments yeah um and I would definitely, and, and I, obviously I'm going in there biased. Uh, I think also, and they even did define terms in the beginning, but like, I think the, the side that Michael Ian Black would be on the more liberal progressive side doesn't argue in good faith a lot when it comes to this. Right. Um, like, oh, comedy will never be killed or never, it's like, no, it's not literal as in like comedy won't exist anymore. Um, so, you know, kill has also has like a double meaning in comedy. So Mm -hmm. it's like, okay. So it's like the term gay or something like, like if a comedian kills, they do actually really well. So, um, I feel like they weren't, he wasn't being, uh, he wasn't arguing. He wasn't being like a bona fide uh, debater in that Mm -hmm. sense, because yeah, comedy will always exist, but like, what is it like what in what capacity and in that capacity, uh, yes, I, I, I think it is. And mm-hmm. I wrote down a bunch of notes here on my uh, post-it notes here. And um, one of the, do you, do you want to say anything before I go into my notes? No, no, let's, let's uh, dive into it. Yeah. yeah, so Michael and Black, the first thing I couldn't stand, and this happens all the time with these arguments, what will happen is someone, I, I'm, I'm tired of saying Michael Ian Black. I'm going to say Black, uh, or, or I'll say Michael. I'm just going to say Michael. So Michael's argument, like he says that, well, uh, he was talking with, I forget who it was, but it was it might mean Mike Berbiglia, who there used to be a comedian who would just get on stage. Michael didn't say who it was. And he would just start saying slurs mm-hmm. and saying, oh, you're a faggot. Like, you're a faggot. Like, and I'm quoting him here. Yeah. Um, he wouldn't even say those words on this. Yeah. But like, and they would get lots of laughs. Yeah. And Michael and Black's like, that's good yeah. that that doesn't exist anymore. It's like, first of all, no one is like, that's not comedy. Right. And of course you find like the most absurd, like that's not what we're talking about at all. I don't think anyone is really asking people like Lou who are arguing that yes, it is killing it. Aren't saying like, you should just be able to get on stage and say slurs at people at all. Like when, like when uh, Michael, Michael Richards, um, Kramer, and he got on stage and started calling a bunch of audience members, the N word, like no one's saying like, Oh, well, can't say that anymore like that right, like right. no like that was he was yelling at black uh, attendees of his show calling them the worst slur that you could call them like yeah. that's not comedy right and even exactly. if this other guy this wasn't as extreme but even this other guy like if that was his shtick he gets on stage and he calls people in the audience uh faggot or, or whatever the homosexual slur whatever yeah. it is it's yeah. like okay but that's not like that's not what people are arguing for yeah. at all. And of course, that's what he goes to right away. Um, uh, he says that um, 
he always are they always argue money like uh well um a lot of these artists or lights like comedians who get quote unquote canceled mm -hmm. are doing fine it's like so so and they they make it back and they um they're not you know in the poor house right my argument is well that's just the ones that we hear of because exactly. people know them that's louis ck who actually was off stage for years yeah yeah and only recently has been back on stage in like large uh at large shows yeah um dave Chappelle, uh shane gillis shane gillis like these are some of the most famous comedians there are i don't know if shane was as much then he was getting a job on snl where he was filed for doing uh like asian voice or whatever yeah, yeah. um and saying things that are like racist about asian food or whatever but like that's just the ones we hear about because it right. is the guy who loses a job at snl it is some of the most popular comedians in the country you don't hear about it for a guy who has been a year in does a set gets uh you know docs gets his job at his restaurant or at his office or whatever and then he quits comedy because right. he did a he did like a um you know a, a distasteful joke or just yeah. or had a distasteful premise or even not even distasteful something that the audience didn't like and right. one person goes and finds their social media like yeah. you don't hear about that nearly as much if at all so i, I hate that line of argument too it's also like we lost Louis, so Louis C.K. is my favorite comedian. Mm, yeah. uh, and we lost years of his work because of stuff that he did in his private life that also, I'm not like defending, I'm not going into the whole thing, but like was right. always consensual. It was gross. Yeah. It was fucking weird. Yeah. Whatever. Like we all- like, He's not a criminal like, though. He's not it's a not criminal. Like, <laughs> like he didn't rape anyone. Right. He did things that made people uncomfortable, but we're still consent, like consented to. And we lost years of his art because of that. Exactly. Yeah. And that sucks. Yeah. And just because, and I'm sure he did suffer financially. And who are you to say that, like, that's okay? Like, that's that's not a good argument. You don't get to decide, like, when people get to work or not. Right. And and you're part of that culture. Like, yeah, you're not booking him, Michael. You're not. Yeah. You're. You don't own the club. You don't have the the streaming service. Yeah. But you're part of that uh, ecosystem right. that permits this to happen and you and more comedians should come out for and, and and that was a really shocking thing a lot of people piled on louis because he was at the top yeah. one that also came up was kevin hart where it wasn't even and they always and his argument here which i found so in bad faith michael's arguments were like well times change the mood changes i, I forget the word he says yeah taste change yeah. um but what happened was Kevin Hart, I believe, lost his Oscars uh, hosting gig. for old things. Yeah, yeah. For old tweets. So it's like, okay, but at that time, even if that's your argument, that doesn't even apply here because those were old things that were probably uh, acceptable then when yeah. they were said or tweeted or whatever. And then because they resurface, he loses a gig. And so what if Kevin Hart is like actually, I think, the most successful comedian in the country? Besides yeah, maybe think. the who's the the puppet guy? Um, oh, I know who you're talking about Jeff Dunham. I, yeah, I yeah. actually think he's the most successful comedian in in America. Maybe the in terms world. of just like tickets sold or like, or like money. Like... Yeah, oh, I think. Huh. Don't quote yeah. me on that, but I've heard he's yeah. like extremely successful. Huh. Hey, it's, it's a big country, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not my cup of tea. But he's a big country. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a big country. But um, uh, Kevin Hart is extremely successful. But like. So that like hosting the Oscars for some people, even me, and I hate a lot of these people, like yeah, yeah. that is a pinnacle of success. Like that's really cool. Yeah. And he lost that. So what about the, like, that's still like, we look at history and art and institutions in this way. It's like, who hosted this? Who won this award? Like, we like these things. And that sucks. Like, I don't know, maybe that Kevin Hart, maybe that was one of his goals in life. I don't know to yeah. host the Oscars. And, and because also, he's got a huge audience. That could have, you know, he he could have brought over a lot of crossover watch viewers to sure because you know, he's not Oscars, a movie star. been losing viewers for fucking decades now, right? Um, so it's just like cool, but well then like you, you just lost ten million people, um, who are like, well, well, fuck the Academy, I'm not going to watch this. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. And I think even I'm not positive, but wasn't what he was saying like one of those things where he was saying, I hope my kids aren't gay, mm -hmm. but Something it's like because like I don't know if it's necessarily because he finds that 
abhorrent or detestable, but because of like society, mm. like, I, I don't know if you think about it, if you're a progressive person who believes that like, let's say like trans kids are under attack, right? Like trans, right, right. trans, not kids, trans people are under attack. Yeah. And it's more likely that they're going to be harmed in life because of their identity. Right. And you love your child more than anything in the world. Any parent would tell you that, right? Any good parent. I see what you're getting at. Yeah, Don't yeah. you not want your child to be that thing that makes them a target? Exactly. Like, yeah. that's so natural. Like, right. what do you mean? Yeah, of course I don't want my son to be gay. Be, uh, okay, let's say I'm in I'm in Saudi Arabia. I'm in Iran. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. want my kid to be gay because then they're, they're more of a target of persecution. Like, exactly. that's not me because I don't want a gay son. It's because I don't want my gay son to be attacked by, like, crazy fundamentalists. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. so that I, I think that's what he was saying mm. somewhat. I, I don't know exactly. But again, that that's all lost. It doesn't right. matter. You yeah, said yeah. you don't want a gay child. Like, you don't want yeah. a gay son or something yeah. like that. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, a couple of points there. Um, you know, the, uh, uh, the typical woke rebuttal that, that, um, uh, uh, you know, Michael put forth, which is sort of like, yeah, you know, some of those people, so many of those people who, who, who were quote unquote canceled, you know, they, they got their jobs back. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, but like, and, you know, like you said, like, yeah, these, these are high profile cases and yeah, they're, they're, they're doing fine, if not better now, but it's also like, but still losing your job because you said something offensive 12 years ago, that's still unacceptable. That's not a good punishment, yeah. whether you're, you're rich or poor, especially if, if you're poor, if, especially if you're not yeah. famous. But it's like no matter what, losing your – you should lose your job because you're bad at your job. You should not lose your job because you said something offensive on Twitter you know, however many years ago. Um, and so, so there's that aspect. And then there's also the, the, the thing of, of like, you know, kind of going back to like, uh, uh, what does it mean to be canceled exactly? Because, you know, all these people, they're still working. It's like, yeah, but again, how come like, we're just totally fine with a culture, you know, even if, even if, if a person didn't lose their job, even if they weren't canceled there, that still doesn't, um, uh, uh, ignore the fact that there was a group of people who were demanding that somebody lose their job, that they be ruined and and uh, labeled a bigot, um, because of something that they said. Yeah. Um, it's like who the hell are like who the hell are you? Yeah, and these people. That. Why I can't stand this yeah. segment of like the left mm -hmm. is because they will like shed blood and keyboard warrior and donate for like the most sick despicable people to get their due process in the court system yeah. or um you know to to have every appeal to have the most fawning uh media write-ups about them like they will do whatever it takes to help like rapists and murderers not like even spend like now i'm talking death penalty here like like which i'm against but, like yeah. life in prison but like the concept of due process is completely lost in like civil society Yes. Like it makes no sense. Like they will find every excuse to not punish people who like do actual harm to people who, who rob and rape and, and steal and yeah. uh, you know, violate people and assault people. But like God, like any of this other stuff, they will uh, use the um, like the burden is on them. You have to like prove your innocence. Yeah. You have to uh, get pilloried. And even then you are still like persona non grata. It's yeah. more of like cleansing your soul. It's very religious. It's very like auto de fe yeah. and during the Inquisition, um, super creepy and and hypocritical. Remember that you you, you would probably know more than I that uh, there was that athlete from a couple of years ago who lost the Heisman Trophy or something because he it turns like he had used the term faggot when he was like seventeen or something in a text message or in an email, and then he had like his trophy taken from him or something. I don't think it was a. Might not have, but but it, it was some hyper. It was some 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 athlete, um. But it was like, oh, okay. you 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 said a a, a, a homophobic slur when mm -hmm. you were a teenager. Uh, we're taking we're, we're he he, and then he had like his trophy taken away from him. It's like what what these two had two things have nothing yeah. to do with each other. Like, yeah, I don't remember that exactly, but I know um the general case of that of, of well, I mean it's very common. Uh, yeah. I can't remember exactly who said that. I know a quarterback for he's like a backup now but he was at georgia he mm -hmm. was i don't think it was that that was more like racial stuff um i can't remember exactly but uh the point being is that yes times change sure. an example i always give is I, I went to a lot of bar mitzvahs growing up i lived in a very jewish area um not jewish myself but i lived in a very jewish area so there would be this guy who would come to bar mitzvahs it's, mm -hmm. like during the cocktail hour for the adults and he's a guy that would entertain kids 
and he was like a walking encyclopedia. His name was Monty, and um, his he would literally hand out money. He would hand out like silver dollars or something. It was very cool. Mm -hmm. And he would ask. You would say what topic? You could say you know uh, New York Yankees or um, or uh, you know Marvel movies. I don't think they were that big that, back then. Yeah. Um, but like anything, right? Yeah. And he would just rattle off trivia and if you raise your hand you'd say yo monty that was his thing go yo monty yo monty you go okay you and, and you give the answer um and there was one that was uh nwa it was like rap music and it was nwa and it mm -hmm. was what i forget what but he asked like okay what does it stand for and my friend i remember with my friend justin mm -hmm. um he was like uh can i say it <laughs> he and like pause he's like can can i say it and yo monty was and monty was like yeah, it's like a proper noun. Mm. And then he says it and he gets the silver dollar. And yeah. someone recorded that. And we were like yeah. 13, right? This is yeah. bar mitzvahs. Yeah. Like someone recorded that. My friend Justin, he could have like lost his, you know, and then let's say it's six years later, you're going to college. Yeah. Someone that certain resurfaces, which has literally happened yeah. recently, the past yeah. couple of years, where someone sat on a video of a girl singing to a rap song from like three, four, five years ago saying the n-word because it's in the song it and Kendrick he Lamar, it because he, he brought her up on stage and was like hey sing the song with no, me no 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 she was just singing in a car she was like oh. singing along to it but the you know about that case though right <laughs> no i don't it was, it was some hip hop artist brought up some a white girl from the audience and said yeah you want to sing with so she starts singing and it had the n-word and she just said she said it because she, and then he's like whoa 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 stop the music you can't say that because yeah but it's part of the song though so it's like yeah, I kind of set her up for that one. It's like, what the hell? Like, I, 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 that I'm not that argument. I think is so dumb. I think like, yeah. Yeah. whatever. Yeah. Um, it's the most illogical argument. Like the, the the fact that people can't see there's a difference between calling someone that mm -hmm. with the hard R in like yeah. a certain way and then like singing along to a song. Yeah, the fact that that's lost is something that like we would need to do a whole episode on. Yeah. But anyway, um this 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 situation like the girl was going to like university of tennessee the kid sat on it sent it and she like lost her spot at university of tennessee it's like what the fuck like like that's what and and at the time that probably wasn't a big deal at all she like it's not she was hiding it, it the kid saw it because it was on her snapchat or something yeah so it's yeah. totally acceptable right. in the culture and and then yeah. because a few years go by that it's not and then that like real life consequences happen that girl didn't go to her dream school and it's really sick and and i i don't know like my last note for this part i have a bunch more for the debate mm -hmm. but it's like um we used to make fun of people who would try and shout down not we because I, I wasn't really that very old but like right. this was really coming from the christian right for a while mm -hmm. a comedian would they, like make fun of these people like who would come up to them after shows would call them you know sodomites or going to hell or whatever it is for yeah. uh these these jokes and um and these were mostly coming from the right wing and they were not taken seriously like these people were 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 made fun of rightfully so because mm -hmm. uh, the same thing it's like okay you don't have to go to the show you don't have to watch it on tv and they would make it their business to do that yeah. and that was totally flipped and that same logic is just not applied to them. Um, another thing with the past is actually Lou brings up to Michael all the things that he's made jokes about, which are things like rape and, and AIDS. And Michael Ian Black actually had a whole bit about being a slave master. And he's <laughs> done blackface. Yes. And, did, did you did you watch until the end where someone in the audience go it was like a q a yeah i saw again. i saw a bunch of the q a not all of it uh, but there's a part he goes uh my question is for michael ian blackface <laughs> <laughs> i did not see that <laughs> but yeah it's like he did blackface which was i mean blackface is one of those things that actually like that was bad for a while like yeah. that wasn't really i, I mean I don't know, I guess intense and important, but like blackface was created to, I, I mean, I don't know. There's arguments against this too. I read a book about that. It was not, a, I don't, it's weird. I'm not going to go into yeah. a whole blackface episode, but anyway, like that seems like something that even back when he did that, which was probably sometime in the two thousands, cause it yeah. was for a show. And, yeah. and what did he say? And Michael brings up, and I'm, I love that he said this because he goes, yes, but the skit 
was about blackface being bad. However, that's not how it works anymore. Perfect example, which I wish someone brought it up to him. If I was there, I would have. Okay, in Always Sunny in Philadelphia, they have blackface up like a, in a few episodes mm-hmm. because they're doing uh, a home movie on um, Lethal Weapon where mm-hmm. all, all the characters are white in the show. So one of them is Murtaugh, Murdaugh, and they do blackface. Yeah, and yeah. they're showing like these people, the whole point of the show is that these people are terrible. They're showing episode after episode, literally the pilot of Always Sunny is called The Gang Gets Racist. Like mm-hmm. it is about how terrible they are against everyone, to, the, to each other, to all groups. And so in the show, it's showing how tone deaf they are how dumb they are and how they think it's okay. How D would do these characters like an Asian woman, uh, like anchor or like woman on the street and a Latina one and um, like a racist Irish one. And they would do blackface and it would show it was, it was, it wasn't promoting blackface. It was showing how dumb and bad it is. And yet those episodes were pulled from Hulu. Mm -hmm. You can't see them anymore. So Michael, my, my, like, I wish someone brought that up to him. Like, so, that's comedy this is one of the most popular uh at least cult following shows Mm -hmm. on tv it is i now maybe the longest running sitcom of all time or one of them Mm -hmm. um it has like 15 16 17 seasons and they pulled episodes from it from like 2009 2008 2010 like in 2020 so it's been on for a decade or more and they got pulled in 2020 during the great awakening and like you're telling me that this shit's not real. Yeah. So, so if, if they pulled your episode that you get residuals for, are you saying, and, and you need that money because I don't know, maybe you went through divorce or you need to pay child support or something. And yeah. now that money is dried up because you don't have those episodes anymore. And I know that TV, they make a ton of money from this shit. Yeah. Like you're saying that that's just okay because times change right. because tastes change. No, that's absurd. Right. And and I, I like I love that he said that because it shows that like they, he doesn't they don't people on this side they don't actually think out these arguments they they hit the same points over and over yeah. and they are just so easy to to kind of uh, perforate yeah yeah um, yeah no absolutely it's it's um uh it's dumb that's what it is it's dumb. very dumb um, yeah so I have here he brings up so press is like so Michael you have jokes about AIDS rape. Uh, how you were a slave owner and you did blackface, like a bunch of other things. <laughs> and and he, even Michael goes like, yeah, I probably wouldn't do the blackface now because his whole argument is that like, no, you can still say and do what you want. That was like yeah. part of the crux of it. And he's like, no, I wouldn't do that. He even says like, I think he kind of says in passing, like, yeah, I think the Kevin Hart thing went too far. It's like, no, so you do see like you do like, yeah. so where do you draw the line? Cause you draw the line here. Well, some people draw it on the other side, which is like right. loose side, which is much, I don't know, higher in terms of like what should be permitted. And yeah. a lot of people draw much lower. Um, so uh, he brings up also Tropic Thunder. Again, Tropic Thunder is, I think, one of the most underrated comedies. It is skewering Hollywood, skewering Hollywood, being tone deaf to things like uh, race, like black people not getting jobs because they're going to hire a white Australian to play <laughs> yeah. the black lead. Like yeah. it's making fun of that. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And zoomers are like freaking out over tropic thunder that was the thing iron man did blackface omg yeah exactly and it's like okay but the point is that it's bad the point is that uh it's like a take on the kind of toxicity of this um what of it the uh the method um method acting Yeah. yeah Yeah, method acting, uh, Hollywood, you know, smell like its own farts, thinking they can just do whatever they want. Um, the tone deafness of it, black people not getting the roles where it's like the the black, the actual black guy is like a collateral, more collateral character. Yeah. The black lead is a white Australian who's played by a white American. So yeah, it's yeah. like it's like you have a white you have a white American playing a white Australian playing a black American. Um and uh that's very funny. And it's a very yeah. funny character. Yep. And uh that wouldn't get made today. Right. Yeah. It just would not get made today. Unfortunately, even though it's a hilarious premise and the movie is fantastic and that mm-hmm. being a big part of it. Yeah. Um, let me see here. Uh, I can't really read my own handwriting. That's the problem. Oh, so me? what was that? Are you, did you become a doctor? I wish I was a doctor. <laughs> no, I just can't write. I have hand issues. Um, 
he brings up a okay so also michael michael also kind of does a self own he mm -hmm. brings up a girl name is it jamie hogan that's what i can't really read her first name jamie. jenny hogan yeah jenny hogan yeah um did you see this part yeah 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 he brings her up she does a which i think is like fairly mild me too yeah. joke yeah, not yeah. even me too joke sorry it wasn't a me too joke it was uh, the, the joke was basically i like soft sex because i don't i'm a light sleeper yeah which yeah. is like okay like it's funny it's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's it's a rape joke yeah. i think a pretty mild one yeah. um as far as rape jokes go but she said i wouldn't say that uh when i thought of that mm -hmm. i i didn't say it basically yeah. i sat on it for a while yeah. which is self-censorship because yeah. of the environment because of right. me too and michael's point is well look here she is in liberal new york city because that's where this took place and she said the joke the easy retort to that is okay that's because me too was discredited over yeah. and over and over again because people didn't do the idiotic just believe all women get rid yeah. of due process me too had some great results it mm -hmm. did get rid of some monsters and yeah. also ruined a lot of people's lives who didn't deserve it yep. um there's also a lot more gray area like any fucking issue that exists yes. uh, and people pushed back that's why she can tell that joke now michael on stage because people pushed back yeah. and the the environment changed because of that not yeah. just because time he heals all wounds it's because people fought back against it yeah. and yeah. we that shouldn't be the standard is that we have to just wait for the environment to be right because who knows if it ever will how long did the soviet union last for what can you say in 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 communist china like what can you say in russia like you can't do self oh well eventually gay people will be able to like have e equal rights in russia so just wait it out before you do like your protest or say whatever you want like no that's not a good standard like what kind of standard is that right right so um again it's just like a cell phone which like anyone i, I can't remember Lou's response to that but it's like to me that's so obvious yeah <laughs> um they talked yeah, about the uh the um sorry i'm kind of just rapid firing here because yeah. i didn't expect to have all these notes but they did the buy joke which this is another great example this is dave weigel who is at wapo um you know a a publication that i'm not sympathetic to at all uh and he this is a better example because he didn't say this joke right he retweeted yeah. and or liked a joke yeah. that was so like boomer uh like dad humor type like shit. dad humor boomer like 1990s joke which was that all women are bi it's you just have to figure out if it's polar or sexual yeah like yeah. so milk toast just like, like a dumb with, like, with like a dash like a dash of transgressiveness because there's like sexuality in it but yeah. like really like a dad boomer joke yeah. and he no did he lose his job no i don't think so but think he got so. pilloried for it he had yeah co-workers having signing open letters against him yeah. and all this other, like things that should just like shouldn't exist yeah. it doesn't matter always that like okay you keep your job but you're you're like besmirched yeah. you're uh castigated by co -work. like it creates hostile work environments right. that's not the culture of free speech that we want right. like it's it's that's really disturbing to me it turns into like a cultural marxist kind of struggle session doesn't it doesn't mean that they don't kill like okay they don't kill you in the end you don't get locked up you don't lose your job so you can't you know pay your bills or feed your family and pay your rent or mortgage so like that's still pretty fucking bad yeah yeah and, and I, I feel like the left so often just falls down to like oh well, he's still employed yeah. like oh he's not in jail like so what like and yeah. this is the same and again, why I get so upset about this, this is the same side that's like, words are harm. Yeah. Like, you're harming me. Like, this is violence. And it's like, well, you're committing things that are, I wouldn't even say violence, but like much closer to violence and to harm that have real life results, uh, real life effects and externalities. <sighs> yeah, I know, man. Um, uh, I know I brought up this debate before, but uh, Jim Norton versus Lindy West um so jim norton is a comedian who's he's part of opie and anthony he's kind, kind of a shock jock type of guy but 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 he's it's funny because he's so articulate mm -hmm. um because i also listened to this other debate that he was in again uh where he was he's going up against uh judd apatow and this is in the wake of the louis ck allegations and all that mm -hmm. stuff so this is like 2019 i think yeah. um and then and then so this so it was when, when footage surfaced of louis ck making those jokes about the parkland uh survivors of, of, the, of the shooting there 
uh, the school well, shooting. What, yeah, what was the joke? He, 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 I, it was something like, how, "How can these kids like? Why, why are we giving the microphone to these kids? Like they, they, they don't know anything about policy, or they don't know anything about you know, just because they survived a shooting doesn't mean that they they're experts on something like that. Right, it was right. it, like obviously it was tasteless and offensive, whatever. But it's also like, yeah, but he's been doing that shit for decades, though. So it's also kind of true. It's like, exactly, yeah, yeah, like it doesn't mean they're not the most sympathetic victims, but they they don't. No, they're God, capable like, of being wrong. <laughs> like it's also like, yeah, the policy. So anyway, yeah, go yeah. Ahead. But um, but but uh, Louis C.K. got a bunch of uh flack for that because like that was like his like when he went on sabbatical or whatever for a year and like when he when he reemerged like that was the first thing that came. I think out that's a kind like, way to put it, sabbatical. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he was ostracized. Um, and then Judd Apatow was was like, yeah, you know, Louis C.K. is one of my heroes. I just don't think that that was appropriate for him to do. And you know, I think you know, like that was very inappropriate. And it's like, um, I remember Jim Norton, and, and, and he's like, you know, like. Like that should he, he like the first thing he should have said publicly was to acknowledge, you know, even if it have done it in, in a comedy sketch to, to acknowledge, you know, the the what he did, you know, the masturbating in front of chicks and stuff, whatever. And then, uh, you know, just, just to offer his fans some sort of comfort. But then and then like it's like, but yeah, I don't look to comedians for comfort. I don't yeah. at least not for that type of like oh, I want to feel warm and fuzzy. Like, yeah, this is a, a grown man admitting for something that he did wrong. So I don't, yeah. I don't look to comedians for that. Like. Well, first of all, the first thing he should have done is a land acknowledgement because we're all colonizers. Exactly. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Then he should have comforted the, <laughs> the, the crowd. Do you know what I love? Uh, and I, I'm going to shout out to my editors here. So mm -hmm. in my most recent book, I'm also going to shamelessly plug my new book. Yeah. Um, I, you know, in the very, very, like the dystopian progressive country I have in it, uh, I have and. I have a uh, <laughs> there's like a Oscars like ceremony, right? This isn't this is takes place on this takes place 97 years in the in the future. 90. Yeah. 97 years in the future. 2119. And um, and. Uh, uh, you know, they're at some like award show type thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and. Uh, I have I have them do an air acknowledgement where they have to hold their breath because they're breathing uh, colonized air and, and like my my editors who were both I definitely say like liberal and or not progressive like very progressive like yeah. they they wrote in my the edit when they're editing it they're like this is the funny like this is hilarious like, I, like, I love this one. like some of them do like they do have a sense of humor like this is yeah. hilarious yeah yeah like so so I give them a lot of credit for that um, but yeah but yeah you know it's um, you know getting back to the debate though of like uh, we, 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 we were talking about like the uh, the washington post guy um you know, yeah getting all that flack for for retweeting it's like okay if, if you're gonna call for this guy to lose his job how about before you do that you share every single time you made an inappropriate joke or you laughed at an inappropriate joke and do it publicly so that way we can all judge you by the same standards that you're judging this person that's kind of like that's kind of what it is though is like you know when you go to a comedy show or you watch it and, uh, and the comedian a lot of times will call people out. It's like, it's okay to laugh. Like I see yeah. you holding it in. Yeah. I see you covering yeah. your face. Like it's okay. That's, that's the fun. That's all yeah. you're saying something you're not supposed to say. Like, that's the point. That's yeah. kind of what a retweet is. Yeah. Like yeah. it's kind of just laughing. It's, it's yeah. like showing some sort of, it, it's not always laughing if you're sharing like kids getting blown up in Gaza. Like it might be right. bringing attention. It might be awareness. Right. right exactly. But all like, if it's a joke, it's probably like, I enjoyed this. This was funny ha ha like that's what it is so basically you're signing an open letter for someone who laughed at a joke yeah like in it like in a com like at a comedy show like that's the same thing and not even like that good of a joke <laughs> <laughs> like a like a pretty a pretty um i don't know anodyne joke yeah yeah i mean it's funny it's like you know I, I, and i've seen this so, it happens so many times on twitter where it's like so 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 here's here's a statistic that kind of undermines the idea that the u.s is a patriarchal country men commit suicide three times more often than women um and so but, but i've seen twitter feminists just be like yeah that's still not enough um <laughs> and like it's just like it's like you could say that you could you can you can happily cheer on you know the fact that men are committing suicide at such a high rate but if, if you know uh, uh, some dude at a some journalist retweets a dumb you know pun which is basically what it is yeah. like, like, this, this is a dumb pun play on words um that's the real crime it's like <laughs> yeah it's, it's that just, that was that was an absurd one yeah. um i don't i can't read my last note it says we don't know up and courts what am i trying to say here <laughs> And then I have it's a catch twenty two. 
<laughs> I swear I don't I don't know what my last my last note is saying here. Uh, uh, yes, because we Oh, that that's for the other thing that we already oh. talked about. Yes, Gilbert we... Godfrey was another one that he got canceled like a while ago. Like he lost his Aflac gig. Yeah. That he I forget, he does the the duck or did the duck. Yeah. I mean, he's dead now, right? Yeah. And uh he lost that for doing a uh, a uh, off-color joke which I don't even remember what it was. Almost. I think I remember it was uh, so it was in the wake of Fukushima, like that. Right. Like, yeah. So that's a while. It was like 2011, 2010. Yeah. yeah. So the joke was something like, uh, like, yeah, my girlfriend just broke up with me, but I'm sure, I'm, I'm, I'm sure one of them will will arrive to me on the Pacific Ocean or something like. And it had to do with, with like, like because I guess so many people died from that that like bodies were showing up like in the Pacific Ocean and like. Was she like Japanese? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It was, but it, it, it was just like, like, like Fukushima. Yeah. It, it, but it was, it was like, you know, I'm pretty sure a girlfriend will just wash up on the shore or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so, yeah. And he lost a gig. Like, he lost a gig because that's of that. top gig, dude. Affleck. The comedians are just, you know, fighting each other for that one, too. No, dude. I'm not even kidding. Do you know how much money you make? I learned all of this recently. Uh, like, do you know how much money you make in commercials? Uh, I know it's a lot. I know it's you make a shit ton of money. Yeah, I yeah. trust me. I know from yeah. pr- people who make this money. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard, and it's like it's it's a jaw dropping amount of money that yeah. you'll just get. It's like, oh, here's a check for twelve thousand dollars for yeah. a, a pharmaceutical commercial I did a year and a half ago. Yeah, like yeah. unbelievable. That's that's where the money is. Is commercials. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um. So, but uh, are you aspiring? Yeah. Are you aspiring actors out there? Yeah, go, fuck go Hollywood. Do, just, go, yeah, go commercials. do commercials. Yeah. People make a living doing commercials, I've learned. That, that's oh, it. absolutely. I, it, it's possible to make a living doing um like stand-in work and like um like extra like, like not if AI you know. gets the best of us. I know that's true, yeah. No, I uh, honestly though, and, and by the way, the writer strike did end. I heard yeah. it was pretty good for the writers. Um yeah. I don't know that and the actors too. That's what yeah, and both yeah, both ended, right? Yeah. Um, but that like there are not all not all the not all of the people who are protesting are freaking Rachel Ziegler, yeah. who's like bitching about getting paid millions of dollars to be in a princess outfit. Um, it's people like that who like yeah. live in Burbank and make a living go being in commercials, stand in yeah. stuff like yeah. they they count and AI and the studios and whoever does all this stuff. I, I don't know the specifics, but like yeah. they want to basically get rid of that whole career. Yeah. And yeah. That, that's a lot of middle class people. Um, so I think I showed you the, uh, uh, the VFX artists react channel. Mm-hmm. They, so, so, yeah. so they also react to bad special effects in movies. And there, there was one that, uh, there was a movie that, that, that it wasn't even a big movie. It was like some high school comedy that showed that that was on the Disney plus. And there's a scene mm-hmm. that takes place during a basketball game. And for whatever reason, like 90% of the crowd was real, but there's one row of like eight people that was CG, like oddly CGI, like, like, like previous, like, okay, like this is like, but it's weird. Like they're just like, they're just kind of like, everyone's like laughing and cheering and everything. And then there's, there's three people and they're like repeated too. Just kind of like, <laughs> like in a new movie. Yeah. It was a new movie. Came out this yeah. year uh, within a few months. And then oh, it was just like, man. And it, uh, I was like, just yeah, like, hire, just like hire a few people. I'm sure we'll do it for very little just to say they were in the movie. Like, I know, and, and that's kind of what they said in the video, if I remember correctly. Like, yeah, I know producers like to pinch, uh, uh, like to uh, uh, cut corners and stuff. Um, but at some point, like a, a producer was like, "Okay, I, I, I will spend the extra four hundred dollars to get a couple of actors to yeah. sit in the bleachers there. We've got, we, 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 but it's just like you know, we, there's a crowd of a hundred people, and but four of them are CGI, and it looks like shit. Yeah. We can pay Dude, sports. <laughs> I feel like a lot of times sports stuff doesn't translate well like i just watched a movie uh this actually wasn't that bad it was ray romano's directorial debut it's mm-hmm. called somewhere in queens his son is like a ba- is a basketball player he's very good mm-hmm. um not like elite but he can go d1 and he's playing you know his school is pretty you know they're playing some actually playing a school from new jersey i, I don't know why they would be playing a school from new jersey mm-hmm. in championship but they are mm-hmm. um i think it's supposed to be a take on like saint patrick's which is this elite basketball school in new jersey mm-hmm. uh and um you know, he has just like if you've ever known basketball, this is like just probably wouldn't happen, especially at this level. Like his son is going to take the game winning 
a three point shot, like a three pointer, not a layup, a three pointer, and the star, and he's like going up to shoot, and he's releasing the ball, and that star player just swats it like into the crowd. It's like that just doesn't have like those kind of swats just do not happen at that level. Right, like right. you know how to time it, you know the distance, like a clean swat like that just would not happen. Yeah, and it's just like, and the whole crowd's just like, oh, it's just like, <laughs> it's like that's what you end on is yeah. like it'd be one thing if he like hits the rim or something, or even the ball gets tipped, but like a yeah. clean swat at three point range is like wouldn't happen <laughs> in, a, in like a, a high level high school basketball game. Yeah, it's it very, it very funny, but yeah. um, but it wasn't supposed to be funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, not a great movie. It was okay. I gave it. I think I gave it a sixty, like literally the lowest passing grade. I yeah, think yeah. I give it, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I didn't. That's all the notes I had for the debate. I definitely recommend watching it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not you, the the listeners, because um, I know you watched it. Uh, maybe I'll come to a different position again. I was very open yeah. to Michael Ian Black's. To, like I like that's why I like debates. That's why I listen <laughs> to podcasts. Like I, I'm listening to all different types of podcasts with Israel Palestine things and they make different points and some I agree, some I don't. So I'm like, Oh, I didn't think of it that way. Yeah, yeah. This was just not one of those situations. Like, yeah. And I, what's, what's funny is that I think Michael Ian black was being attacked on Twitter for Israel stuff mm. like recently. Right. And again, it's not the same thing. It's not comedy. Like it's not yeah. like he made a bad joke or something, right. but like he it was, it, he was the person of the day, as they say, or he was yeah. the main character of the day. For yep. something and he was kind of i think going against the typical consensus and i don't think it looked it didn't look very enjoyable um, i'm gonna tweet at him saying i listened to the debate and you lost yeah i'm not sure if <laughs> sorry for your loss like... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry for your loss parentheses the debate oh that's actually what i'm gonna put <laughs> okay oh I'll, man I'll, I'll do it i'll do it right after this yeah, um, yeah. i um, think we're, we're over an hour at a couple Where's my other? I, I'm I, I'm a I'm a post-it slut. I always have so many post-its. <laughs> oh, I was going to talk about oh, as my as my name suggests here, Nikki Haley's identity politics. I do think we should talk a little bit at one episode about like how Republicans also do identity politics. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I think Nikki Haley is a perfect example how she has attacked like Vivek for <laughs> basically being anti-woman <laughs> like her. Like she does like she's kind of trying to do the suburban mom identity right. politics but just on the right and it's like yeah, that's yeah. still the same thing <laughs> like right, right. and i don't know what it is i think just south carolina politicians are the breed of republicanism that i i cannot stand like lindsey mm. graham is a goddamn psychopath yeah. um, nikki haley's from south carolina uh tim scott's not as bad but he's pretty like standard or like i don't know what's going on down there again yeah. this is a this is a, a white man a black man and an indian woman and they're all the same crazy shit <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's, um, neocons are back, baby. Let's just put it that way. The neocons yeah. are back. Yeah. We thought they um, were dead, but come, come back with a vengeance. Uh, great. But yeah, but yeah, well, not, not to make it a political a politics yeah, yeah. episode on policy, but on identity politics. Oh yeah. No, totally. I, I, well, I am seeing more of that and it's a good critique. It's like, huh, you know what? It's true. Yeah, she is just doing identity politics. Tim Scott is kind of doing identity politics yeah, about yeah. be like it's not just like oh color blind. It's like he's doing identity politics in a Republican way. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. No, yeah, I, I'm I'm yeah. definitely up for ripping on on uh, South Carolina uh, Republicans uh, and, and yeah. Republican identity politics. Uh, real quick, did, did you ever see that clip of Lindsey Graham where it was like in 2015 where he's criticizing Trump for running for president and he's like I you know he's he's crazy he's a kook and then like a year later he's saying the exact same thing but about somebody else but like 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 he just switched teams and now he's like yeah. saying the same thing to like I can't remember but, but it was just I, like but it's funny because he used the exact same insult but it's like oh now I'm Trump's I'm on Trump's side now I'm saying oh, the other yeah. side is like dude that happened on both sides though that was yeah. All the Republicans being anti-Trump, never Trump, and then they fall in line and bend the knee yeah. because he won, and they realize like that's what actually the Republican base wants. Same thing happened. Look at our fucking vice president. She called Biden 
a racist. Yeah, she said yeah. that he was pro segregate and like he kind of was, yeah. but then you're his vice president and you're doing, of course, today I literally put under the tweet, we did it, Joe. And then yeah. I put Gar or that, that was on Instagram. Yeah. But, and for our 100th episode, I did the uh, Kamala Harris, yeah. um, Kamala Harris. Um, uh, we did it, Joe, for, yeah. for our for our hundredth episode. Uh, she was calling him the worst things that you could call someone yeah. in civil society, like as a yeah. politician. And it's like, oh well, now we're running mates. Yeah, like uh, they're also full of it. Lindsey Graham, though, scares like we would be at war with half the world if he yeah. was in charge of it. He is a lunatic, and I don't like to make fun of people's um, affectations their speech their you know unless like biden can't he's the president he can't yeah. run the country because he falls over shit and doesn't know where he is half the time yeah. but like lindsey graham he, he pronounces israel like it's one syllable <laughs> israel, israel like it's like dude I fucking enunciate <laughs> open that goddamn southern mouth yeah Dri dripping molasses like open it. I, I, it makes me want to like oh uh, like pull my jaw just the way he talks yeah, yeah. israel uh, we owe to israel <laughs> Oh man, Charleston's nice. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah, Beaufort's actually beautiful. I, I actually always thought I'd, I'd live in that part of the country, but no, yeah. nope, Jersey boy. Yeah, yeah, it's not as bad, I guess. It's slightly worse, actually. No, now that I think about it, dude. What about Gavin Newsom? <laughs> say the quiet part out loud. <laughs> Might what did my saying, governor say? <laughs> yeah, you might be saying that we just cleaned up San Francisco because all these world leaders are coming. And that's true because it's true. <laughs> and that was so goddamn funny that, I like, that. He could, oh, you missed it? I, I retweeted it. What, you're not oh. checking my retweets? No, it was yeah. uh, amazing. Yeah. I, 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 well, I quote to it, I said, <laughs> this is a reminder that they hate you <laughs> like yeah. like san francisco's a cesspool but then because g uh xi jinping is coming and a bunch of other leaves from asia they cleaned it up real quick um so i, I don't know your state is a uh is a absolute heck hole. dumpster fire yeah, but i'm yeah. um, coming twice next year so I will. <laughs> <laughs> well you heard about the fire in la that uh Really fucked shit up recently. Yeah, the the shut down like a huge highway ten, yeah. freeway as you call them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Homeless people did it, and no one wants to say it. I know, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. Keep paying those taxes. I, I'm not. Oops. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, man. So comedy is not. Is no, is I think yeah. I think this I think this debate honestly should have happened two years ago. Yeah. Um. It did. That's fine. I still think uh, Lou is, I think, great. Like, he's yeah. very, very funny. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was also cool that they both went to NYU. So it's like yeah. you kind of get both sides. I was like, oh, that's very cool. They're in the West Village. I, I think they were at the Comedy Cellar, right? Yeah. Which is yeah. In, in the West Village. Yeah. Um, which honestly is one of my favorite neighborhoods in the country. Politics aside, is mm -hmm. gorgeous and mm. awesome. Um, but, uh, but I thought it was very cool that they're like, oh, yeah, we both went to NYU and they have these totally different perspectives on this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, I'd recommend the debate, watching it, and check out our Patreon and subscribe and like our. I'm tired. My, my, my I'm tired. yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take over. I'll take over. <laughs> um, if you want, to, if, if, if if you don't want um uh wokeness to kill comedy, um subscribe to our Patreon, like, subscribe, um tell your friends about it, and. Check us out. We're, all, we're also on Medium too. Uh, I got some articles uh, I want to write soon. So we are on Medium and yeah, okay. YouTube and Spotify. Yeah. So and check Apple. Us out. Are we on Apple? No. Not yet. No. 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 All right. Okay. No, I'll look into that because that'd, be that'd be a good market. Apple's I, a pretty, they're an up and coming startup, aren't they? Yeah. I've heard of them. They're a friendly little garage. <laughs> um, all right, Benjamin. Um, all right. Stay reckless. Fight Adios, the crits. Adios, mis amigo. And Fight the crits. Yeah.